Hello my friends and welcome to Fishtory. I'm Alexander Williamson and today we're going to be talking about a very serious subject that is probably what all of us have been doing the last few hours of the day, maybe just right before this video popped up, which is looking at different types of videos, different types of short media. So you have short form and longer form, and what's going on right now is a war for your attention, a war for your clicks, for your opinions, and for your time on a social media platform. And something that's gone on, perhaps without you even realizing it, is you spend time on these platforms hoping to be entertained, hoping to learn something, hoping to discover something, spend a half an hour, and maybe uh, indulge in one of your favorite hobbies or discover what's going on in the world. And what's happened is because of how the reward system, the monetization of these, these two very different styles of media have evolved, it's created basically the purest form of get your attention, keep your attention, and if it's not working, Next, in the short form, it's all about the spectacle. It's all about something you've never seen before or something that's exciting, something that's beautiful, something that you identify with, something that you say, yes, I totally agree. Or maybe you think, oh, that idiot, I need to get in the comments and say something. Either way, they want you to engage or they want you to stay glued to it for that 30 seconds. That's not much of a commitment to a minute. And then either way, they want you to stay on their platform. Now in the longer form content, there's still time to explain what we may think of as the boring stuff or the context. And in a short form, there's none of that. So today we're going to look at a series of videos that a fish keeper created. And the first video saw over a million views. And it looks like an adorable little project. Maybe if you're brand new to fish keeping, you would think, oh, that is so cool. I want to emulate that. But what there's not time to show you, other than the spectacle of this adorable fish and a, a brief overview of what's going on as far as its care or its habitat, is there's no time to tell you the context and the accurate information that you're totally missing and the fact that this is a puffer fish. It's a difficult creature. It's a creature that happens to usually live in brackish water, which is another very difficult thing to do if you're brand new to the hobby. And it skips over all the rules that we would generally give you for even basic, you know, neon tetras or rasboras or guppies. So let's take a look at this video. It's just one of literally hundreds and hundreds that I've found when I get onto TikTok or Instagram or even YouTube shorts. And it's something to hopefully remind you that the boring stuff, the stuff that you swipe away from, sometimes there is a reason it's there. And yes, it can sometimes be excessive, but it is usually the context. It is the glue that holds together the stuff that makes you say, ooh, ah, whoa, and ah. So let's take a look real quick at what is going on out there and the unfortunate story that's about to unfold in front of your eyes right through TikTok and we'll examine what you get there in the short form versus what you tend to see in the long form, which I hopefully just explained is the drier bits. So watch this exciting part, this clickable part, and please listen and think with your own mind and please comment down below what it is that you are missing while you are glued to this video, because clearly it was a very popular video. So I'd love to hear about more instances of this, about how I'm falling into the trap of making the thumbnails and the clickbait and all of that. I would love to hear your feedback on the way this is going and how we can either combat it or change it or learn to live with it. Regardless, let's see this video and this story about a very adorable little puffer fish. I saw this video with 1.4 million views. Today I went to Petco to buy my first fish. My budget was only $50. I started to look around and there were so many options. I okay, so right off the bat, I thought this guy's budget was $50 for the fish, but watch what happens. Also, the fact that people have loved this over 100,000 times means that people are watching this and thinking it's cute. Maybe they're going to copy this. Maybe they're going to think, I, I love puffers. They're adorable. Uh, I should get one too. So uh, we know he's going to pick out a puffer fish. Let's, let's see what happens. 
I was searching for an hour and then I finally decided what I wanted. I decided to get this awesome freshwater puffer fish. It came out to be seven. So he bought it as a freshwater puffer fish. By the looks of it, it looks like a green spotted puffer fish. Uh, there are a lot of different puffer fish. It could be really young and something else, but it looks like a green spotted puffer, uh, Asiatic species that, yes, as a baby is from the freshwater, but it then grows to be a brackish fish. And just so you know, these get, these fish usually start off in the store, maybe an inch, maybe two, uh, and they kind of look like this. Then their spots get more distant and get kind of larger, and they can reach all the way up to five, maybe even six inches from snout to the end of the tail. Seven dollars is a pretty pretty crazy good price on it. Now let's see how the video uh, continues. Dollars. I then went to Walmart to look for a cheap tank, and I found this 1.5 gallon starter kit for only twenty-five dollars. Wow. Okay, so we know trouble is on the way if we didn't already just by the fact that he breezed over any sort of care, any sort of temperature, uh, salinity, uh, you know, feeding, anything like that. But then he goes and buys $25 aquarium, which is a cheap plastic aquarium. Clearly on the, even on the picture, it shows that there is just a guppy. Uh, and, you know, it's 1.5 gallons. Not even a pea puffer would be happy probably in there. Now, if you had lots of plants, you know what you're doing. Maybe you could pull off a, a couple pea puffers or something like that. Um, but really recommended wise, you want to get all the way to 5, 10 gallons. And then every uh, pea puffer, and that's not what this species is, you would say another gallon to three gallons, depending on who you ask, of space for each additional fish is probably a good rule of thumb. They're not like normal fish. They eat a really high protein diet. They need special food. And uh, I don't know if he's going to cover that, but I doubt it in the time we have. So let's continue to see this. And also let's take note that uh, he did start this a year ago, and it's on February 7th that he posts this. <laughs> I then had to buy some gravel and some plants, and that came out to be $12. As soon as I got home, I started assembling the tank. It was so he says he bought plants, so he bought plastic plants. Uh, that's not necessarily a crime or anything, but it just seems fitting that this guy bought basically a, a red vine licorice tub, and then he, he thinks the, the gravel, the blue gravel at that, is what's important and the fake plants. Now, it, it is some decor. It is some places to hide for the fish to give it a little bit of security, but it is, I mean, man, it's a bad sign. Let's see uh, where this progresses actually pretty satisfying I then got him acclimated and I put him in the tank he was a little nervous at first but once he got used to it he was chilling comment down below what you think we should name him okay so I guess that's all we get and uh, yeah 1.5 million people thought that was a, a good video now at this point this guy is getting rewarded with attention and with uh, also you know 10% of the people are giving it a, a heart which you know for this uh, online forum that's not too bad uh, that's sad to say though and that was the full video nothing about care nothing about do your research and perhaps the worst thing of all is that this goes out to anybody who likes this subject matter it's anybody looking at boats or looking at whatever funny videos they may just this must may pop up next and this may get them into fish and that's the crazy part about this algorithm feeding you whatever is next whatever is clickable whatever is popular in any subject and in our hobby that can be very dangerous and these are smart fish in many studies they've been shown to see up to 30 feet or rather 10 meters outside their tank they can identify their owner they know you know when it's feeding time and they also need special care with their food some of them won't even eat flake food or pre-prepared or dried food some won't even eat frozen food that readily they need to eat snails and when you get into these uh, mid-size and larger puffers they also need special care and attention to some of their unique anatomy also same with when you're feeding them you don't want to just give them a bunch of blood worms if that's what they enjoy eating or just snails if that's what they enjoy eating they're notorious for getting bound up stomach issues when you feed them their diet which you know tends to be high protein and tends to not be cheap tends to need some planning set up another tank for 
the snails or where are you going to get the food and as it gets older you're going to feed it you know cut up shrimp or you know what's the plan here none of that's covered it's always breezed over in these videos so we see that that is what this guy had going on and then we can see that he's got the next video with a hundred thousand the other day i bought this freshwater puffer fish i asked you guys what you think i should name them and i landed on he's actually looking dead. fairly healthy there i'm surprised the tank was too small so i went on facebook marketplace and bought this 10 gallon tank for ten dollars i then bought this filter and this air stone bubbler i added spongebob's house or all right so it's cool that he was at least trying to do things that were better and you know he adds the uh the hang off the back filter which actually will probably provide plenty of aeration on its own still haven't heard talk of how the temperature is going to be handled in this tank or what it is what the ph is or any of that kind of stuff it's not on the screen anywhere and here we are only two days later uh, from his first post and yet again that had a hundred thousand eventually gonna add squidward and patrick's house and here's puff daddy eating like and follow for updates on puff daddy okay so now the fact that this fish yeah it almost certainly appears to be the brackish uh you know green spotted puffer and unfortunately he's also feeding it dehydrated dried high protein food which is going to expand in its stomach it can eat a bunch of that if it feels like it and then it expands and it it gets stuck so this isn't looking good but there is another video update so let's see what has happened in the time uh since then i mean you see he's got some other videos it looks like he's bought some sea monkeys a gecko another fish maybe and uh, clearly these are working to get views but then we see right here a lot of you guys have been asking for an update on puff daddy and unfortunately he passed last week his tank and he seemed to be fine and was okay so he says that it passed away last week now the date that he posted this is 322 meaning he bought it on 207 it lasted what six weeks god what a waste what a freaking waste not to mention that then you know it's a waste of the setup he bought and everything too but i mean what a waste of a beautiful fish and a smart fish and also there's just nothing to learn from this other than don't do this but you don't even know what part of it was wrong so far so let's see if he shed some you know insight into that at the end here but i woke up in the morning and i found him in the bottom of the tank i held a funeral for wait a minute okay so he said he found him at the bottom I of the tank the so as we look at the fish here you can see the belly is sunken in he's gray he does look like he could be lifeless but at the same time it doesn't necessarily look like he is fully deceased for sure i don't know let's just hope he was but uh, needless to say is his beautiful gold and even had a little bit of bronzing and red in the head all gone and uh his belly looks like it's bloated in the uh, front part and sunken in the back. So, we'll continue. I held a funeral for the little guy and said my last words. Alright, so he's making fun of the funeral for the fish, alright? This is my first ever fish and I learned so much. I want to thank everyone who gave me advice and helped me learn. I'm eventually going to get another fish, but I'm first going to do a lot more research and make sure the tank is perfect for him. If you guys can, drop down in the comments what would be a good starter fish for me. All right, so then we have here that uh, he says that it passed away on uh, March 20th, 23. He just said in the video it was a week ago. Uh, and the video is dated two days difference. So it means that he could have filmed that whenever. So did that fish even last a month? Did it even last a week? We don't even know. We just don't know. We don't have the context. We can't, you know, the, the communication isn't going on. Uh, luckily, there aren't a whole bunch of hearts on this one. People uh, are, are hopefully seeing through what's going on here. And it's just, it's so sad because it wasn't necessary. The guy didn't do any research. Money was the top of his mind. And then clicks were the second thing on his mind, if not the first, to make more money. And I see this all oh, so often on TikTok. And I just wanted to take you through one of the many, many stories. Now, does this occur on YouTube or Facebook or, you know, Instagram, other places where people share information? Yeah, of course it does. But not at the rate that I see this going on. And then the fake, you know, oh, I'm going to learn more. What's my next fish? People just want to see if this guy's going to do it again. It's just, it's it's sickening to me, really. At the end of the day, it's sickening to me. And it's... It's unfortunate that this is what gets millions of views if it's got the cute factor, it's got a buzzword of 
maybe at the time I, I actually don't think it was trending at the time but the puff daddy thing it's just it's all designed to be uh entertainment and this is a fish's life this is you know freshwater ecology brackish ecology which is very complex and we've learned really nothing we don't know why the fish passed away we don't know he says he learned a lot what did he learn uh what did he learn other than you know everything he did was wrong essentially which is why i don't really want to keep posting on TikTok at all. I think clips that show, you know, a really pretty fish says the Latin name and the common name inspires people to go learn about it or something really um, incredible that occurs when a fish jumps up and eats a bird or, you know, some really uh, very straightforward thing like that that's not claiming to be, you know, a guide or a video. That, in my mind, is what should be on there. And anything more than that, it, it's just setting other people up to do the same exact thing. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you would like to support what I do, I can't do it without you and your support full time. That's it. I can't make more than a video or so a week. I can't answer all your questions in the comments that I try for several hours a day to get to and your emails and everything else. So if you like the content, keep watching, explore the, the backlog of over 1500 episodes. And if you really wanna help out and you can manage it, please don't feel obligated. It's only a buck 99 to become a member of the channel. You get 200 extra audio episodes, behind the scenes sneak peeks, and little uh, heads up on sales or maybe discount codes and things like that. And soon we will have a Discord, so stay tuned for that as well. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day. In the meantime, I'll be here, and I'll see you guys next time on Fishery.